Welcome! My name is Douglas Getz, and you've found your way to the Diving and Thriving podcast. Here, we have enlightening conversations about how we can better navigate this sometimes crazy world we live in. From refreshing spiritual perspectives to tips about personal growth, the focus here is about how we can become better human beings. So I'd like to thank you for being here today, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome, everyone, to the Diving and Thriving Podcast with your host, Douglas Getz. Today, we got a special guest with us, Marcus White. Tell everyone hello. Hello, everyone. So glad to be here. I really appreciate uh, this opportunity to just, uh, uh, you know, have a great discussion with my good friend, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, man. You're, you're, you're one, one incredible guy. And so I'm really happy to have you on. You got quite a, an interesting history and you're doing a lot of interesting things right now. Um, working in education and being a minister at a church. Yeah. No, you got a lot of good things going on. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting scenario. Um, uh, I guess since the pandemic about a year ago, everyone kind of took a, uh, a pause on everything. And um, what I actually thought about the other day was how things are actually picking up, <laughs> um, even in the virtual environment as we are here today. Um, and just so many things kind of um, picking up where we left off. And, and yeah, my church that I serve as a minister at is in Brooklyn, New York. I do attend Rider University as a graduate student studying organizational leadership with a concentration in higher ed. And I'm a graduate assistant for the Center for Diversity and Inclusion uh, there at Rider University. So I'm helping out with a lot of the spirituality efforts on campus. So there's a lot going on. And in the midst, even right now, and I'm planning a virtual youth retreat. We would normally be going to the Poconos, but um, um, it's just an opportunity for young people to get away from the new norm, I guess, that we seem to have created um, and to kind of create a new, a newer normal. So uh, the theme actually for it is going to be a new reality. So it's pretty cool. A lot of stuff going on. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, it's, it sounds really great. And from the things you're in, you're really into giving back and helping those around you. I could see. And that's, that's something that, that you're really, really about. So. Absolutely. No, definitely. I think one of the privileges and opportunities that I'm uh, most grateful for is being able to be a counselor for a uh, men's leadership academy at Rider University. And it's a cohort of about 10, 15 young men. And we get together every Tuesday. And yesterday's session actually was about cultivating a spirit of gratitude, a mindset of gratitude. And um, a reoccurring theme or a uh, factor of, of how to do that is just being thankful and appreciative of opportunities. Um, and so, you know, we were talking about different ways that we're able to uh, serve other people or appreciate other people that come into our lives. So that was definitely something that um, really struck a chord with me because you, you hit it on the nail. I love being able to connect with other people and give back to them. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really quality thing. And you know, it's something the world definitely needs. Really. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, so many times we look at circumstances that seem to take from us in life and, you know, it's unfortunate just this past year, we've had so many people uh, that we've lost or, you know, circumstances, you know, took them from us, if you will, whether it was due to COVID, due to old age, um, due to just health ailments, failing, um, fatal accidents. But um, one of the things that I was encouraging the men and that I do is um, to be thankful and, and consider the positive moments and times that was given to us with those, with those individuals. And so um, regardless of what seems to be taken away from us, we can always find uh, a reason to be thankful for what's given to us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. You know, gratitude. I think that's one of the, the sources of happiness. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's actually scientific research that, um, that basically says that when you are thinking about being grateful, it's a positive experience on your brain. Um, and so that actually has uh, an effect of alleviating stress 
And so um, even for your physical body, being grateful and cultivating gratitude and just being mindful and appreciative of opportunities, things, people that that you get a chance to experience in this life has a positive effect on your whole body. So absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, I, I, it most definitely is one of the keys to happiness. And, you know, I've known that for a while and it's, it's tough because when you're, when you're in a, in a rut, sometimes it's tough to practice it or you forget about it. Um, and so having those as reminders, I remember something that I was doing back in high school. I watched this movie called The Secret. And okay. it had this one concept about gratitude rocks. And what it was, was like a little reminder to say you're thankful for something. Wow. And so as I was in high school, like I still do it today, I give out these gratitude rocks. Oh, that's cool. Yup, I give them out to people. Um, especially like certain people, if they look down or if they're, they don't look like they're having a great day. I say, Hey, do you, do you have a gratitude rock? They're like, <laughs> what is that? So then I go and explain and it has to do with the law of attraction. And the okay. more you focus your, uh, awareness and your attention on things that you're thankful for, the more you attract positive things to you versus Absolutely. if you're, versus if you're focusing on the things that you don't have or you don't want, or you're unhappy about. Like you'll attract those things to you as well. So the key is to focus on the things you're thankful for and bring more of that into your life. Absolutely. You know, it's funny you were talking about um, that because yesterday we were considering different ways to condition yourself to become more thankful. And one suggestion was actually to create a gratitude journal. And so actually taking time to write down different things that you're grateful for. Um, that I thought that was really, really profound. Um, but I like also your tangible aspect of having something tangible as a reminder, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and even the, the, um, the illustration of a rock reminds me of a verse in the Bible that talks about, you know, if you hold your gratitude in and don't express it as far as being thankful to God for all that he's provided, uh, you know, the scripture basically uh, illustrates how rocks will cry out. They're thankful for their existence. <laughs> and so we oftentimes say um, in the church, well, you know, I don't want any rocks crying out for me. I'll tell God, thank you myself. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. really great. Yeah. 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 Throw, throw that idea out to them. I used to buy these, these rocks by, by the bag. And so yeah, I, I love giving them out. And it was honestly one of the best parts of my day because I feel like I may have actually made a difference in someone's life. Absolutely. Like you said, whether you're coming across somebody who may seem like they're a little down and out or um, just are unable to see that bright, shining light of, of life or the brighter side in life, um, being able to um, help them to realize there really is a brighter side of life. And I've oftentimes been... I'm even criticized of being too optimistic, but why not, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, the opportunity to, like you said, experience happiness, um, to live, a, as I've learned, a healthier life um, and, and being grateful. And there's even another, um, actually a song that comes to mind, uh, as you were talking earlier, that says, um, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings, take some time, actually see what God has done. Uh, you know, sometimes we get so... Uh, uh, tunnel vision focus and and, and uh, difficulty in seeing all the different blessings around us, seeing all the different opportunities um, to help improve our life, to help better our life. Um, because of, and oftentimes it's because of sometimes the expectations that we have. Right, we're looking for things to turn out one way and totally blindsided for the purpose and reason why it didn't go the way that you wanted it to, but. There was a reason for it. And when you come to find that reason, you realize yeah. hindsight's 2020. And you're like, oh, thank God it didn't turn out the way that I thought and wanted it to, because had it turned out that way, I would have experienced something even greater that I never even anticipated. So yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's 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 awesome. It's awesome, man. <laughs> I'm even grateful to have connected with you. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly connecting at a, a peer mentorship or a peer institute group at NJ. yeah 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 it's, it's a great thing um, so one of the things that we did yesterday was we took some time and actually encouraged 
the young men to just come up with 10 different things that they were grateful for. And that was, that was actually the easy part, right? The next yeah. part was actually now, which are the top three? <laughs> yeah. So it's easy to just say, okay, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. But then when you have to distill it down to the top three that you're most grateful for, I, it was a, it was a challenge. It definitely was a challenge. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's really awesome. And, and what would you say? I'm sorry, go ahead. You're you're in such a great position to voice this to to those around you. So how did you how did you get to that position? Like how did you know that you wanted to be a minister? And then how did you end up getting into education where you're pretty much that same position? Yeah. To, to, to academics, to students, to absolutely, man. I, you know, it's it's kind of it's funny because pretty much what I was just saying is, you know, I had a plan for my life when I was in high school. I thought, and actually, um, it seemed as if I didn't have a plan. It seemed as if everybody else, this one wanted to be a doctor, this one wanted to be a fireman, this one wanted to go in law enforcement, become a police officer, and I was just like, what am I going to do? And so while I was in high school, I remember taking this one course called Law, Economics, and Management, and I was doing really well in that course, um, and the teacher for that course actually was also the advisor for Future Business Leaders of America, FBLA uh, student club organization that... Um, we had at our, at our high school and she was encouraging, putting in the plug, you know, students join this club. And so I said, why not take a look at it? It was a regional competition, um, extracurricular club. And I had the privilege of competing in a category called business law. I did really phenomenal with it. And I thought, you know, why don't I just make a career out of that? I'll study business and I'll study law. So I went to the college in New Jersey where we met um, and I studied business administration and um, with a specialization in management. And then um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna go to graduate school, study English or law school, really, did really well with debating. Um, I just wasn't certain. So I uh, eventually just went ahead and went to law school for a year. And while I was in law school, the church where I serve and worship, uh, we had gone through a major transition um, where our pastor had passed away. And um, at that time, in all sincerity and honesty, I could literally feel God himself um, revealing to me part of my purpose, uh, want to help minister or serve the youth of our generation. Um, and then two, um, to just basically help spread the gospel, the good news that there is a better way of life and it's through Jesus Christ. Um, grew up in church all my life. And so it, I, I wasn't really sure how that would actually pan out. Um, left law school uh, and yet still ended up in a, in a law firm. And while I was working in a law firm, the academic advisor from my undergrad passed away. And as I sat at my desk, I had another epiphany of everything that she did. It was now my time to serve this generation um, and help students get through the educational experience during college. And so I set out on a journey to make a career change and um, pretty much... Um, let go of, of, of pursuing law and becoming an attorney and really found my passion. I think that's what really um, is, a, is a major, major element of, of my journey is, is, re, is coming to the realization of what I was passionate about. And I found myself all along the way, engaging, interacting, conversing with students, embarking on the college experience and, you know, tracking their experience all the way through. But while I was in, in, in um, the law firm, I had this epiphany that my academic, academic advisor passed away. And um, she was a phenomenal, phenomenal inspiration, helping guide me through. And if it had not been for her, I really don't know how I would have navigated through college. And just being in that position, that place in higher ed to help students say, you can do this. You can make it through. Um, there is a better life, uh, uh, more to life, even after this journey. So let's just get through it. And ultimately, that's that's what I did. And so that's where I am right now. And it's a phenomenal journey. I I I, I cannot better be positioned fulfilling my purpose um, and the plan for my life. So that's yeah. how I ended up where I'm at. Where I'm at now. <laughs> yeah, man. That's and and it's it's a perfect perfect. Uh journey that, that brought you to here because you're so perfectly fit 
for the <laughs> two roles, being a minister and being an academic advisor, basically a, a guidance, uh, a source of guidance for the students on campus. And, you know, I, when I was in the law firm actually recruiting law students, I, um, I would advise them. I would encourage them. They would be really nervous and not know whether or not um, this was the right career path for them or what um, type of law they wanted to study or if this was even the right where I was working, the right law firm that they wanted to embark their career on. And I would encourage them, you know, what do you like to do? What uh, fuels your fire? What, uh, you know, um, helps you wake up in the morning? What is the first thing that you think about when you wake up? What's the last thing that you think about when you lay down at, at night? You know, therein is where you'll find your passion, right? Your passion. And I would encourage them to understand that actually translates to your purpose in life. Whatever it is that you're really passionate about, it, it's part of the reason why you exist. And for me, it was inevitably working with the youth of our generation, working with young people as they're starting their, their college career or their, um, their vocation and, and they finish school. And, um, you know, that was the thing that I would always preach, if you will, is once you can identify your passion, then you'll become aware of your purpose. Um, and then all that what's left is just to pursue, pursue it, right? Pursue. Yeah. We, we know the movie Pursuit of Happiness. Well, you'll find happiness in what it is that you're passionate in, because that's a part of your purpose. And ultimately, I always encourage people, there is a plan for your life. And that plan involves your passion. Yeah. 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 That's so perfect, man. That's you fit. You fit the role so wonderfully. You speak so eloquently. Oh, man. And. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this much. It wasn't always like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It wasn't always like that. As a child, I was very timid, um, very unsure of myself, didn't have the confidence to really um, convey what it is that I felt in life. And um, I think once I came into an awareness about my passion, therein I found my confidence, therein I found the courage to express myself, therein I, I, I just was able to um, you know, vocalize what it is that I feel is, is pertinent in life. And, and here I am today. Can't stop me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. So what role do you hold at Ryder University? You, you rattled off a couple. I just want to hear them again. Yeah. So I am a graduate student at Ryder University. And there I've had the privilege of not only studying organizational leadership, with a concentration in higher ed, but I'm also a graduate assistant. And the department that I work for is the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. And what's really a privilege about that position is that I get to not only work with particular students of a discipline, whether it's uh, law or um, education, so to speak, but I'm exposed to all of the student body. Um, and what's amazing about it is working in the work of diversity and inclusion is I get to promote and encourage people to understand that they have value. Each and every single person has value. Um, and when we come to respect and, and appreciate that value, therein we can find inevitably some of the things that we need out of life. Um, it's wrapped up in other people oftentimes. Um, God's place inside of us things that we all need and it's in each other. So working with each other um, and the concept of inclusion is no one's left out. That's the beautiful thing about it. No one is left out. You have purpose. I have purpose. Um, there's a reason for our existence. And when we come to value, appreciate and acknowledge that we can live so much more a successful life. So that's the work that I do at Ryder. Yeah, no, that's, that's so wonderful. It seems as if you're, your uh, your purpose and passion in ministry just got just got uh, duplicated in the education field. It's man, I see I a lot of similarities between the two of what you do. That's it is it is, and I never even I never thought of it that way, right? Um, I knew that my career would be in ultimately in higher education. I just didn't know in what capacity as a professor, as a recruiter, because I've had extensive experience with that, um, or as an admissions officer. But it's just been, as I said, an amazing journey because I'm not only able to serve 
students and helping them understand their value. But um, one of the most uh, privileged opportunities that I've recently come across in my position as a graduate assistant is helping with the spirituality efforts at Ryder. And so I get to connect with the religious and spiritual student organizations, uh, affiliate ministers in the local community, whether they're at mosque, whether they're at different uh, Catholic parishes, whether they're at different Christian churches. Um, it's just been awesome, awesome. And I think the icing on the cake for me is that the institution that where, I, where I'm at right now at Ryder, we literally have been able to construct a physical center for diversity and inclusion and, and renovate our chapel, which I would consider as a spiritual uh, center where students are able to learn of different resources. Um, and it's not just students, the actual um, university community, where we learn of different resources that exist right in the on the campus and then the surrounding area and learn about different religions, learn about different uh, philosophies and ways of life and helping not only the students, but the entire campus cultivate a measure of faith. Because I think if anything else is that we need, it, 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 it's faith. This past year, we've experienced things unprecedented, never even saw or even thought of before. But yet here we are, 2021, <laughs> having overcome 2020, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think it, it, it's a measure of faith. And if we're going to go further into 2022 and wherever God would have us to go uh, and further years, it's going to take faith, believing what you can't actually see. So, mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's valuable stuff. Definitely, man. The next question on my head, and you may have just answered it, but I was going to say, what, what piece of advice do you end up giving to a lot of uh, youth and a lot of students that you come across? I feel like one aspect of it is definitely faith. Like no. knowing that things will work out when, when they don't look like they're going to work out. Absolutely. Absolutely, right? I think um, life can throw you some really crazy curveballs, right? Um, one in particular for me was leaving law school. Uh, for the majority of my life, I thought, I, I guess you could say from high school into my early 20s, I thought I was going to go ahead and pursue law and become an attorney. Had everything mapped out, right? Um, but my faith, um, my belief in God, my belief in what you can't see, I couldn't see the rest of my future, but I just believed it. Um, it kept me pushing forward, right? When you anticipate something ahead of you, you may not be able to see it, you may not be able to tangibly reach it or feel it, but your belief, your confidence, knowing that better lies ahead, there's more for me to experience, there's more for me to um, accomplish, it drives you forward, right? It gives you an ability to keep pressing, to keep expecting more out of life, to keep anticipating more out of life. And I think we all need that because sometimes the circumstances that we find in life can be very oppressive, just weigh you down. But when you know that there's more ahead of you, when you know there's more to life for you to experience, it musters up this strength that you didn't even realize that you possessed. And before you know it, you're looking back and saying, whoa, I was there. I was going through that. I was dealing with that because that internal strength that I believe God gives each and every single one of us is faith. It's believing what you can't actually see, right? The concept of heaven, it requires faith to get there. You know, the concept of, you know, whatever it is that you anticipate that's better out of life, it's going to require faith. What Believing what you can't actually see. So, you know, I would encourage people to really, um, I believe that everyone has it. It's just a matter of recognizing it and growing it, right? There's different levels of faith, but grow your faith, grow your anticipation for the future. Expect more, expect better, right? That'll then cause you to drive towards it. And before you know it, you're just you're overwhelmingly uh, experienced an abundance of life because it, it's, it, it's available. It's available for us to have. So um, don't settle at your past mistakes. Don't settle at your past failures and wallow in disappointment, but there's so much more to go ahead and it requires faith to get there. So I'd encourage any young person, anybody that's listening, um, you know, use your faith. You, we, we often say activate your faith. Um, you know, one of the things that I say is just believe, just believe. 
And that's what faith is all about, believing that there's more. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really quality stuff. And, and you mentioned you mentioned heaven, you mentioned faith. And I think I think a lot of it is comes down to perception and perspective on life. Like I think there's a lot of ways, like if you're if you're down, like it's easy to look at what's not going well. And it's easy yeah. to look at the things that aren't there and people who aren't supportive and, and all those things. But it's, it's really interesting what happens when you start to change your perception, when you start to change the things you look at. Uh, it's, it's really interesting because it, it can get you on a totally different path, a totally different mindset where you're, you're now going through your day and you're seeing the good instead of going through your day and seeing the bad. And so I think one of the concepts, and I've come across this in other spiritual readings, and the Bible said, mentions heaven on earth. One yeah. thing found in other re uh, readings is heaven on earth is really just the perspective of seeing love in everything and seeing the essence of growth and how the, the little seed turns into a big tree and how like the love for a mother and the child takes care of it and how that happens in, in almost every mammal and every like almost every relationship that it, it fundamentally occurs the same way and so Absolutely. seeing that helps to kind of change your whole perspective on life and can truly create heaven on earth absolutely absolutely man i think um when you think about a concept of heaven on earth i what comes to my mind is all good no evil right all good no evil and that's possible to experience right um i think that it boils down to like you said perspective how are you looking at things how do you see a situation um how do you see your circumstance how do you see life in general and i told i would totally agree with you that um it's possible to experience, but again, it goes back to you have to believe it. The choice is yours whether you want to believe it and therefore enable yourself to experience it. If you don't believe it, then you won't receive it. You won't experience it. But if you, if you, there's, there's one phrase that says, say what you see so that you can see what you say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just goes to illustrate the power of our words being able to help create our reality. Yeah, and, and I yeah. totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. If you're always verbally downing your, or, or expressing verbally negativity about your situation, it's going to be really hard to see the brighter light of things, yeah, right? It's a lot it's tougher. Hard. It's a lot <laughs> tougher. And even if something good comes along, it's tough to think that it's going to last. Right, right. And, and I think that kind of coming full circle goes back to the concept of maintaining a heart of gratitude, right? Being thankful for everything allows you to experience that heaven on earth, if you will, um, because every positive experience, um, it, it didn't have to happen to you. You didn't have to encounter that positive um uh, uh, instance, if you will. Right. And so being thankful and grateful. Um, and then, and then before you know it, it actually can become instinctual. And you talked about how, you know, mother instinctively loves her, her child forgets all about the pain of labor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the begrudging experience of nine months of carrying a physical thing inside of you that's growing and developing we could only as men imagine the beauty in that but we've also heard some of the you know gruesome pain and and the nausea and the you know the 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 not so pleasant moments of those experiences but at the end of the day again that mother she's anticipating looking forward to um not only the relief but seeing this new creation experiencing and caring for um, this, this vulnerable, uh, entity that just came from her, right. The love feeding that, 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 that offspring, uh, protecting that offspring. And it's just, it's a tremendously beautiful experience to observe. And, and we can have that as well as humans, <laughs> yeah. we, we yeah. can have that same thing. Um, and it just goes back to being able to consider, right. 
all the different blessings, the good things that happen to you in life. There's even one phrase uh, in the Bible that talks about if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to tell God, thank you for everything that we've experienced. Because it's just, it's, it, it, it's, it's so much more than we could even enumerate. So much more. And so the more that we thank God for the positive experiences, the more that we consider the positive things in life, right? We, we begin to experience a little bit of heaven on earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you said if, if you do it long enough, it becomes a habit. It becomes yes. ingrained. And, you know, it's, it's really interesting that, that situations, really tough situations, situations that look very bleak and, and not much good comes out of it. There are things to be thankful for in those. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one of the things um, and reasons why I ended up leaving law school was because of the transition of my former pastor who I served with. My former pastor happened to also be my grandmother and so who lived with me. And so there was, you know, a transition in our church and, and my religious aspect of my life. There was transition at home and in my daily life. Um, and she had such an influence on my life. Um, but when I came to realize what she believed, her, as you said earlier, her perspective in life um, and everything that I've had opportunity to learn from her life, um, when I took on the proper perspective, so much of who I've become was because of her influence. And so um, ultimately what would helped me in the loss of her physical presence was to realize that she fulfilled her purpose, her passion uh, for existing yeah. in my life. Um, and when I thought about that, I said, wow, what an amazing experience, you know, for her not to have just been my grandmother, but to have been my pastor, a confidant, amazing, amazing influence in my life. And a lot of times we, we want to hold on to all those things. But um, when I thought about it and how she fulfilled her purpose in my life, I was at peace knowing that she was able to rest, right? She worked so diligently and hard um, not just cultivating so much good in my own life, but for so many people. And I think that's a huge, huge illustration for me of how we can take something that can be bleak, dismal, disappointing, uh, pretty dark, and then flip it around because of the way you look at it, change your perspective on it. And to this day, you know, I, I, um, you know, I don't necessarily idolize her, but I definitely give honor and tribute to her and her contributions in my life. She's gone, but her legacy lives on and the virtues that she instilled within me. Um, and so there's always something to glean out of, you know, the negative experiences that we have. Uh, you know, we now always come into the awareness of the reason for some of those negative experiences. And as I said earlier, hindsight's always 2020. But a lot of times, if we allow time to process and to reflect and to consider, it gives us a chance to kind of have a better grasp on understanding why things in the, turned out the way they did. And from there, we're able to learn in life. Yeah. 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 No, those are, those are valuable words, really, really powerful things. And, and I really think that's how it goes. Like certain, and it, it kind of defines each person in its own way, whether you're positive or negative whether you see the, the silver lining, because there's always something to be thankful for. Something bad happens, somebody passes away. And there's, it's, it's sometimes the, the toughest thing to look for things that are good. Um, but a lot of times that's, that's the main thing that'll help us start feeling better. The Absolutely. things that that person taught us, the memories that we shared with them, all the great things that that person did the things that we learn from them. Cause we can learn from somebody who does something not so great as well. Absolutely. We what not to do. How Absolutely. we to be in the way we want to be. And Definitely. Yeah, many situations like that kind of kind of show themselves. Um, countless situations that kind of change your path in life. You know, those, those are the things. Sometimes it might be the, the shittiest thing that, that can happen to, to a person might be a thing that changes their whole path in life. And now they're someplace totally different, but they're thankful they're there. Absolutely. And something that wasn't good at one point is now you're like, wow, my life would have been totally different if something, if, if, if I made this choice instead of that choice. But yeah, that, that, no. that attitude is huge. 
you know, just to put it on a personal level, Doug, right? Who's to say? We don't know. But I can guarantee you part of the reason why even you and I met was because I was at Rider University and, um, you know, one of our student affairs administrators introduced me to the program where we met at. Um, but had I not left law school, had I not gone into the law firm, had I not, um, you know, applied to the program where I was at, who's to say that we would have even crossed past, paths, right? But the record is there. We can look back and see because X, Y, and Z, it led me here. It, and there's, and I think we can, we can do that with any instance. We can always look back and learn something totally new from what we may have felt in the midst of that experience, right? The middle of that experience may have revealed pain, suffering, hurt, you know, disappointment. But when you look back over it, for so many people, that cultivates a resilience, an internal strength that they never knew that they actually had, being able to overcome it. And ultimately, a lot of people use a lot of their survivor situations, things that they've had to overcome, tragedies, um, negative experiences in life. Once they've overcome them and they say that, you know, they've survived it, many times in reflecting how they survived, we find those very same people becoming thrivers not just survivors, right? So they're able to not only overcome adversity, but as survivors, but then thrive by teaching other people that there's strength inside of you. And you wouldn't know what it is unless you had to go through something that was pretty dark, dismal and disappointing, you know? And, and, and if you could get to people with that uh, mindset, that perspective, it definitely gives them am ammunition to get through those circumstances. Um, and it's like you said earlier, there's always something to see. And so it's like you said earlier as well, you know, perce perception and perspective. What do you see out of it all? What, what do you see? What do you see? And the choice is always going to be yours. It's always yours to see it for what you see it as or to see beyond that and to see something greater because of it. So it, it, it boils down, I think, a lot of times to a matter of choice, like you said, choice of your perspe perspective, choice of your perception. Yeah, and I think one one view that we can always default to when we're going through something tough is this could always be worse. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's absolutely absolutely. Mm -hmm. And 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 on the flip side of that, it could always be worse. And a lot of times says, oh, I could have done better. And I say, yeah, but you could have done worse. And then the, and the flip side of it is that, yes, there could have been better. So let's go get it because it is there. There is better to go achieve, right? You may have given your all this time, um, but that shouldn't stop you from trying harder next time or anticipating more out of the next opportunity that you have, right? Yes, it could be worse, but don't count yourself out for the better that lies out there too. Go get it. It's available. It's there. <laughs> don't settle for just what you've experienced. There's more. Let's go get the more out of life, right? There's, there's so much more. So definitely, yeah, it could be worse, but I, I can't get rid of the fact that it could be better. I want the better. I want more. <laughs> Marcus, I'm so thankful. I'm so happy that you're leading the some of the youth today. You do it with such a great passion and you. you motivate so well. You're in the perfect position, my friends. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. You're right where you're supposed to be. Thanks so much. I appreciate your encouragement, your your motivation as well. Um, and just watching and witnessing you pursue your passions, Doug, is a huge inspiration. And I pray that God continues to bless you and all of your endeavors and all of your different pursuits because you're doing a great work as well, man, just by doing what you do. So keep on, keep on. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure having you on. I know you got to go somewhere. You got yes. something coming up soon, so I'm going to let you go. But I want to oh. thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm sure everyone that listened really got a dose of motivation today. Awesome. And a couple extra reasons to be thankful. Appreciate you, man. Thanks so much again for the opportunity. Yeah. Have a great rest of the day. And until next time. Until next time. Take care. Next time. All right. We'll talk soon, brother. Later. All right. Later.